to more trouble than all of them that Jesus wants to single out and talk to. Does that mean anything to anybody at all? That Jesus, he didn't come for the masses, but he came for 12. Anytime the multitudes would come, Jesus would go run off in the mountains. And that might mess up the whole mega church theology. And I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with reaching people. But Jesus came because he understood, if I could take what I have and teach it to 12, and those 12 teach it to another 12, and those 12 teach it to another 12, then we'll have world infiltration. And that's why I don't get discouraged when I see you here tonight. Because if we could ever take what we have right here, and each of us go find somebody else and train them, who finds somebody else who trains it, we're going to have something that lasts and not something that raises up overnight and dies the next. Is anybody hearing me? I want us to understand that Jesus is trying to isolate us to get us something that we may have never heard before or may have been oblivious to. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Simon. The word Simon, his name. We have to understand that in the Bible, your name meant something. Did you know that? It was connected to your destiny and your purpose. And when Jesus first met Simon, it was interesting because he changed his name. It said, uh, Simon Barjona, he said, your name is Peter. Peter means rock, right? You with me on that? Jesus said, Simon, Simon. Now, this is the same guy he's been calling Peter the whole time, but now he brings him to the side and calls him Simon. The word Simon comes from Simeon, which means to hear, to hear. Instead of speaking to the hard, solid part of Peter's character, he's speaking to the weak side of him and saying to the part, listen up. And if we really read it, what it means, how that Simon means hear, Jesus is saying, hear me, hear me. Satan desires to sift you as wheat. It tells me he's talking to more than just Peter, but he's talking to anybody that will listen. Is there anybody has got ears to hear? Let him hear, the Bible says, in the place. Anybody, he said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. He desires after you. You can't desire something unless you watch it. Anybody get that? You can't desire something unless you watch it, unless you want it. He was trying to say, the devil is obsessed with you and he wants you. He desires to sift you as wheat. Did you know that the devil is so jealous of you? Because he wishes he could be in your shoes. And he desires that he could sift through your life like wheat. He desires you. But I have prayed for you. Isn't that amazing that in the times the devil's trying to sift things out of our life, that we have someone that covers us? Does that mean anything to anybody? Can I tell you about wheat? I'm so far, I got some, some stuff in here, all these pages. We might get to another time. To sift like wheat. Did you know it was necessary that the wheat had to be sifted? Because there was a thing called chaff that was on the wheat. Chaff. Chaff was a stalky substance that was necessary to give the wheat the strength to grow upward. But for the wheat to be fruitful, the chaff had to be separated. Even though it was necessary for growth, it had no value in it whatsoever to make bread or meal or anything else. It had to be sifted. And it amazes me because it says the devil desires to sift you like wheat. In other words, he really feels like he's pulling things out of your life that you need, but through the process, he's just preparing you to make you more fruitful. I really wish I had some help because it tells me anything I've ever lost through the course of my life, I really didn't need that, that it was something that was necessary for my growth. So that's why the relationship didn't work. That's why the people left. That's why the things didn't work out how I thought it was. I needed that stability to make me feel like everything was okay. But through the process, even though I lost that and I left it, it has nothing to do with devaluing me or saying that I'm worthless or that I'm not worth anything at all. But through the process, it's got me to the point place where I can be fruitful and actually show something from my life. So the devil thinks he's messing with me, but he's really just helping me. And he said, I prayed for you. I prayed for you. Satan desires to sift us like we. Let me jump into this thing. In verse 31, the Lord said, hear me, hear me. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. 32 tells us, But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. 
Strengthen your brethren. The entire purpose for God praying for us is not so that we can just do well. But it's so we can strengthen our brothers and sisters. I believe what God is speaking to us by trying to isolate us is that if we could ever get to the point that we stop having church just to make ourselves feel good. And we understood the reason we have to get to the place where we can hear God is because we have to help somebody else learn to hear God. That through the process of blessing, it's not that, that we just need to be blessed so we can say we're blessed, but it's because there's somebody else hurting that don't have something that if we have it, we can help through the process. That he desires that we strengthen one another. Now, can I throw a curveball and, and might make you mad at me? He did not say he desires for you to help the pastor. He did not say that the pastor was to help you. He said that you were to strengthen the brothers. Now, that messes with the whole thing about thinking that, that the pastor has to do everything. And I'm not just saying that because I'm asking for some help. But I, I want us to understand uh, from a standpoint where we don't have falsified thinking in our life that they're thinking we have to have the pastor to do everything. Because my job simply is to come here and say, let's go. Break. I'm here to do the, uh, the, the spiritual pep rally in this place on Sunday and Wednesdays and get you excited about going out and helping somebody else become better than they are. Because you become better than you are. And that means to do that, you've still got to stay at your job. You can't quit and just want to work at the church all the time. But if you do, you can. We need some help here too. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to stop everything that you're doing and become so super holy and so super spiritual that you wrap your face up in a cloth and you find your spiritual eye and your spiritual center and you meditate all day long just speaking in touch. Those things are great. But how are you going to help somebody locked up in your closet all the time? There comes a time you've got to lock yourself up in the closet, get made whole, get strengthened yourself, get revived, encourage yourself in the Lord. But if you think that you just got saved to sit in a church somewhere, you've missed the whole moment. If that was the process, then the archangel Gabriel would have come down and covered up your mouth till you suffocated and died and went on to heaven because that's the only thing you're waiting for anyway. But we have to understand the fact when we got saved that he left us here tells me there's somebody else I've got to help. Now my question is to you, who is it that God has called you to help? Who is it? Man, that's a deep question. You all had no idea he's going to throw this at you tonight, did you? Who is it that you're called to minister to? Thank God I'm called to minister to you. I love ministering to you. I love you, but who are you called to minister to? Because there's somebody through the course of your life that you've got to touch. I could look around the room, and I know a little bit about the professions of each of you, and I could single any one of you out and just tell you how that, that through your business and, and through your relationships on the job, how many people you influence and don't even know it, how many people you're alike to, how many people that you help. And those people, you're called to strengthen those people. But if we feel like that our only purpose in coming here is get strength for ourselves and we can never get beyond the point of always needing some type of spiritual narcotic to just dope us up, make us feel better about life just to get through another week, just to get uh, through another year, just to get through another moment and get through another trial. We've missed the whole point. We've got to get sober. We've got to wake up and understand that through the isolating process, God's trying to speak something to us so we can help somebody else out. Is anybody with me tonight? How much time we got? We doing all right? Anybody bored yet? Give me a few more minutes. I'll try to find a place to, to cut this off tonight. Satan desires you. He desires you. It's interesting because it said that Satan is asking for you. Anybody have the NIV translation of the Bible? What does it say in 31? It says Satan asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Did you know that you can't ask for something if you own it? You only ask for something if it's not yours. And it says Satan is asking for your life. It encourages me to understand that even though things can be in utter chaos and falling apart at the seams and feel like I'm going under and never coming back, it tells me that even in those times, I still do not belong to the devil. My life is not falling according to his plans. He's asking for me, which means if he does get permission to mess with me, it's still in a controlled environment. And the best result is through the process, something will be sifted out of my life that causes me to be more valuable than when I went in through the 
trial. Is anybody hearing me? I wish we had somebody that could get encouraged tonight for us to understand that through the process, if utter chaos is there, it's under permissible circumstances that God is in control, that he won't allow anything to ever happen to you, that he cannot work together all the things and 